I was only subjected to grass-fed beef. I intentionally ate pasture-raised eggs. I intentionally ate low-caloric, low-fat Greek yogurt. And the result was almost at three times my testosterone levels. May I share a couple of experiments that I ran recently and the results that I got from it? I'm based mostly in Medellin, Colombia. And the country of Colombia has mostly, if not all, grass-fed beef, as opposed to most beef that's sold to consumers in the US, which would be grain-fed, right? There's a big difference between a grass-fed cow and a grain-fed cow. Do you want to just, before I share my anecdote, do you want to just share what you know to be the difference between a grass-fed cow and a grain-fed cow? Yeah, so there's a couple different variations you'll get. Sometimes you'll get grass-fed grain finished, meaning when they fatten them up in the feed lot, what are they feeding them there? There could be 100% grass-fed, which is, again, grass-fed all the way through. Um, or you can have grain-fed most of the way through. But um, for the most part, most cattle in the U.S. are eating grass for a lot of their life, and then they're being finished, fattened up in a feed lot on corn, mostly corn and soy. And what happens is, they add a lot of intramuscular fat. And that's, you know, when you get a steak and it has that white marbling in it, that's fat infiltrating the muscle. If you see that in a human body, that's a very bad thing. That's a sign of metabolic disturbance to the max. That's a sign of inflammation and other things. Um, but it makes meat more tender and it makes it taste good because fat tastes good. However, it also adds a tremendous amount of both saturated fat and omega-6 fatty acids because these, um, well, it adds a tremendous amount of fat to the meat, I should say. Um, they may not actually be adding omega-6 even though they're eating it, but I, it's, I'm just going to tell that's that's what we know. And then I'm going to add my hypothesis that is, I don't know for sure, but I believe that it's because of all that inflammation being caused in the in the cow's body that the meat is somehow picking up some of that inflammation and it's affecting us when we eat. And I don't think we know the mechanism for that. I'm just telling you that based on the patterns I see in people, I think that's what's going on. Yeah. The nutritional benefits that you get from eating a corn or soy fed cow is vastly inferior to the nutritional benefits you get from eating a grass fed cow. Yes. Basically, the grass has all these polyphenols and all the other compounds in it that are really quite devoid in the kernel. It's like, you know, grass is typically relatively green. And then, you know, the corn or soy is that like, you know, like corn at least is that quite yellow color. So I think the answer is you're getting a lot more fat and potentially less other nutrients. Um, and especially, you know, depending on what you're getting, you can get grass fed beef that's fed in a feedlot. Or you can get grass-fed beef that's pasture-raised also. And so there's all these variations, obviously, but um, I think there's it's very likely that for most people, grass-fed beef is a better option. Yes. And segueing back to the experiment that I ran, uh, I, ate a four, uh, I ate 450 grams of pasture-raised grass-fed beef four times a week for about four straight months while I was in Medellin, Colombia for four straight months. So I would go up that's to- That's one, one pound for the for all the Americans listening and Brits. That's one pound every essentially every day. And, uh, you know, I, and in addition, I ate pasture-raised eggs. So pasture-raised eggs come from hens that- ate worms in the ground as opposed to being fed soy, corn, wheat, all that kind of stuff. Now, supermarkets try to trick us is, is what I would submit because they say cage-free eggs and organic eggs, but neither of that could mean that they're pasture-raised eggs. That could just mean, well, they had a whole lot of hens. They put them in some cages and they left the cage doors open and they were free to roam if they chose. But we didn't put them out on grass. We actually fed them a whole lot of corn and a whole lot of wheat. Now, hens don't want to eat that naturally. They want to go and peck in the ground and eat bugs and worms and all of those kind of things. So when you crack open a pasture-raised egg, the yolk is bright orange. If you crack open anything that's not a pasture-raised egg, it's much more a yellow type color. Now, what we want in terms of the nutritional value 
at least that's this is my understanding, and you can correct me or amend me if I'm uh, if I'm mistaken, Andrew, is the orange yolk from the pasture raised egg because the nutritional benefits of that is vastly superior to anything else. Is that your understanding as well? Yeah. So I mean, what's amazing, you can actually show there. There's been some farms that do it and experiments where if they feed um, these hens like things with a lot of red color, like red peppers, things like that, you can make a nearly red yolk, which is to say that the thing the bird eats is getting into the egg, no surprise, and not just the macronutrients, proteins and other things, but these micronutrients, these carotenoids and other um, tertiary metabolic compounds from plants. So um, there are some farms that are starting to cheat by feeding things that are more red, but if it's naturally that way, I agree, it's likely to have a more nutrient dense diet. The only thing I'd say differently is I totally agree. That's what hens naturally eat in the environment, but they love eating corn and soy. They look like, just like people love nothing more than sitting at home and eating sugar and, and stuff like that. So they love eating it, but it doesn't mean it's good for us. No. So just to wrap up my experiment, I ate mostly 450 gram super punta anchor cuts of beef uh, four times a week. And then almost every day I had probably four or five pasture raised eggs. And then I would snack on 450 gram tubs of zero fat Greek yogurt. Okay. Uh, and I would put some blueberries in there. And Greek yogurt has is very high in protein and very low in calories, especially the 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 less fat that it has in it. And I was choosing zero percent fat Greek yogurt. And just to put this in perspective, four hundred and fifty grams in a tub is a big, 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 big tub, and it only had about three hundred and fifty calories in that whole four hundred and fifty gram tub. So very low in the caloric intake, very high in the protein. And then I was adding these blueberries, which are very low in the glycemic index, have lots of great nutritional benefits for you. And for the most part, four or five days a week, that's what I was eating, right? And then on the other days, I ate some crappy food and I ate some chips and I had some chicken and whatever, right? I think I got my blood work tested six weeks ago. My testosterone levels went from when I last had them tested about a year ago from the 400s, which is modest. It's kind of on the lower end of what a man in his late 40s probably wants to have to over 1,000, over 1,000. I mean, that is extraordinary. If you're, if you're a man and you have a testosterone level over 1,000, that's very, very, very high. Now, to be clear, my cholesterol level did go up, did, did increase, but when you tested the good cholesterol to the bad cholesterol, the ratio was actually incredibly healthy. So that's an example, I think, of what you what you do and what you, you know, I, I guess have clients for is in terms of human performances. I ran an experiment. I was only subjected to grass-fed beef. I intentionally ate pasture-raised eggs. I intentionally ate, you know, low caloric, low fat Greek yogurt. And the result was an almost the three times my testosterone levels. Look, and for somebody else, maybe that wouldn't work as well, but that's a home run. Like, you know, for somebody your age, a thousand testosterone level is elite. I mean, that the, the first thing I'd see when if I saw a set of labs for a client and I saw a thousand testosterone at your age, I'm going to scan down to see if the other markers suggest you're juicing, right? Are you pinning testosterone? Mm -hmm. um, and if you're not, that's fantastic. You know, and then again, so is there a trade-off there with cholesterol and heart disease risk? That depends on what the rest of your labs look like. And so again, finding what works for you is fantastic. And I love that this experiment seems to have been like quite a home run for you.